Hi everybody, welcome back. Happy New Year to you guys. Today we're going to do a quick check-in on our worm bin. Um, I am also going to talk to you guys about the benefit of using worm tea in your worm bin. Um, so, before we go on, please like the video, hit that subscribe button, and bring the notification bell for more updates for when I post. Um, let's get cracking. So, I just want to remove this moisture barrier So I don't know whether this video will go up first or whether my worm tea video will go up first, but I uh, made some beautiful worm tea from some castings that I got and um, I <clears throat> plan to use this in this bin today. The benefits of using the worm tea in your compost bin, in your bedding, when you're prepping your bedding and also um, your worm bins you know other than obviously the general use of in the garden is profound so before we get to that I'm just gonna readjust this camera for you guys and we'll get going sorry about that my tripod started acting up okay so before we start digging in here I do want to mention I fed these guys three days ago with our homemade word chow if you want to see that superfood recipe of me making the most amazing worm chow click up here um, one thing I've noticed, I've checked in on them, I haven't mixed this bed in the last six days. And the reason for that is because I don't want to disturb them too much. <clears throat> and there's a pumpkin in the middle and I want them to sort of like um, gather near the pumpkin. What I have noticed though is since I broke up the pumpkin, uh, the worm chow isn't being attacked as much. That's first. Second, since I have started to mix these leaves more in with this bedding and there are um, leaves on top when I add the chow on top of these leaves and they start to dry out they obviously don't get the chow doesn't get eaten so it kind of looked to me like it was clumping and they weren't eating it but the truth and the reality was that they just didn't want to they just didn't go on top of the leaves um, because the moisture just wasn't there. On the bottom side, it was no problem. See, the underside has been eaten, the top side, not so much. So let's just quick get going. I just wanna quickly just go through here, this part here maybe first, just not too deep. I just wanna go shallow to see if there's any worms. And the answer is no. Oh, there's one there. How are you, sir? He seems to be good and happy. I love the fact that they're starting to grow their clitellums. They didn't, when they first arrived, they were small. Even though I ordered 300, um, even though I received 300 worms, they were relatively uh, juvenile and there was a lot of babies. And before I see any cocoons in here, I was actually thinking and considering about counting them properly. Um, okay, so I don't want to disturb. I, I will mix this and fluff this because I haven't um, touched it in a few, in six days. But let's go ahead and just check this feeding zone here with the pumpkins. So there's worms on top already. Wow. You can see the difference between, what is this? Oh, this is sugar. This is the panella from the worm chow. It was a clump. So there are some worms in here. Oh, is that a cocoon? No. I got super excited. I thought it was my first cocoon. See, these guys are really small. He's just chowing on some chow. Okay. Nope. This one's coming apart already. So. Ah, oh, they've made their way through the tops. <clears throat> And all those seeds there. A little bit underwhelming. I thought it was going to be way more, but I think I left it too long and have actually eaten all the juicy flesh. You can see how many still juvenile worms there are in here. I mean, I, I got them just over two weeks ago. 
these fellas, these African night crawlers, and they're still pretty tiny. But that's good. And they're producing some great castings already. Let's put you guys over there. And this bed is pretty full. This bed is about six inches um, deep of bedding. They're on that peanut, sh on those peanut shells. Oh, they're all up in this in this um, pumpkin. These guys are happy. Excellent. So I'm going to fluff this up, and while I do that. I'm going to talk, let's talk about, let me just move to the side, let's talk about the benefits of using worm tea in your bin. Some bits of pumpkin. Okay, so in essence, worm tea, obviously made from the castings of, of the worms, already contain, you know, hundreds of millions if not billions of great bacteria and microbes now put that into some um, dechlorinated oxygenated water add some sugar and what do you get you get a thriving microbiology a habitat for these microbes to multiply at really rapid rates if you think of how quickly bacteria can multiply on on foods or in um, in bodies of water especially if if it's a habitat that is conducive for them to be able to do that they're gonna the, the microbes the population of the microbes is going to explode these guys are really happy in these in this carbon in these leaves around these um, shells let's take a look down here so the moisture level is good in this, but what I'm going to do is I am going to spray them with this worm tea. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want the aid of the bacteria, the good bacteria and the good microbes, to continue to break down this bedding and make, make it more attractive and more appetizing for the worms to to digest and to eat and to create castings I believe that they will eat this bedding quicker and create even faster worm castings for me and, and, and better quality compost as well because you're adding those nutrients right back into into the bed these guys are good and really that's the be all and end all of why using compost tea back in your bins is great um, to rehydrate. I probably wouldn't do it every time, but I am going to do it maybe once every few weeks. And I'm gonna put a whole bunch into the bedding that I've got on the side there. I'm just being really gentle here and fluffing and I just wanna get the, the bottom of this bedding up to the top give it a good mix so I'm probably not going to put pumpkin in here again for a little while let me just put this to the side because I'll bury this pumpkin again what's left of it they've done a really good job of it actually they've, they've really really um, blown through it and there's just little bits of skin I didn't really um, I only separated it and tore it up into three parts but they're all over these seeds look at these guys they're so amazing and they're burrowing down I have turned on the AC I've turned on the AC while I'm working in here today because it's starting to get a little bit hot outside. The size of these worms are really good. I mean, the, the, the ones that were really tiny, like white, they were just maybe wisps 
of about maybe three or four days old when I received them. They've started to become things like this sort of size. Um, they were tiny and white and translucent. But now they're starting to get some color. I won't, I probably won't um, fluff these like this again for another couple of weeks because I don't, I, I don't want to disturb them too much. I want them to start breeding. There are a few worms that are of breeding um, age now, it seems, especially some of these bigger ones that Tritellum has developed. But I just wanted to fluff this out, aerate it a little bit before I put this moisture back in with this worm tea. Yeah, and I just wanted to see and make sure that this This bed wasn't either too wet from the pumpkin. What I'll just quickly do is just bury these down here. In the middle again. Before I cover them up. And that's it. Now, what well, I have noticed that the level has gone down, but when I fluff the bin up like this, it really brings that level back up. Excellent. I really did want to count these worms before they start mating because um, I did order 300, but I was suspect. It does look like there's 300 worms in there. I could be wrong, there could be more, there could be less, but it would be nice to know. So, probably not today because I don't want to mess with them anymore and then I've got other stuff to do. Um, but yeah, oh, before we feed, I just want to give them a quick spray. So if you want to watch that video on the worm tea, I have it up here. Um, if you want to see the, pic the video for bedding, I've got one here. And if you want to see it as a short, actually, I think it is only a short, it's up here. Um, I made these uh, worm teas and I put them into bottles so I can give them away some friends and then this was just one that I've used with the dilution rate on the back for the guys okay so this is the worm tea now and I'm just gonna give it a nice little dousing to put that moisture back into the bed I have been afraid about, about overfeeding them and I did think maybe they're not eating as much because of that pumpkin, which is maybe true. But there we go. That's not much, that's just two tablespoons of some worm chow. I really want them to consume it all before I sort of feed them again. I don't want to um, give them what they call protein poisoning, which it doesn't look like. I mean, there's no, there's no anaerobic, um, there's not anaerobic uh, activity in here. Everything's nice and fluffy. It is moist, great humidity. The AC is going to be turned off again. There we go. And this worm tea on top of this chow as well is going to really activate the microbes and break that down. So I just mistakenly sprayed my, um, my water cooler in here. this a little spray as well so I didn't put much as you can hear the, the bottles finishing Excellent. my protective bit of cardboard and there we go thank you again for watching please as always um, I appreciate you stopping by uh, please hit that like button hit the subscribe button hit the notification bell if you want to buy me a coffee there's a link down below would appreciate it and i hope this video was useful for you guys please leave any comments below and let me know what you think or if you've got any suggestions if you've used worm tea in your beds that'd be a great help thank you